So let's take a look at these two photos. Which one do you think was retouched by AI and which one was manually retouched, considering that the retoucher was kind of average? You might have an answer by now and it might be an easy one. But with technology getting so much better, do you think we artists can still beat AI when it comes to retouching? Let us find out in this video. We're gonna take a look at various manual retouching techniques and compare it with its AI counterparts and see how good or bad we do. So without any further ado, I'm super excited. Let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you wish to go ahead and download these photos and follow along, you know what to do, check the links in the description. Now when it comes to retouching the skin, the first thing we do is removing the blemishes. And one of my favorite techniques is using the patch tool. So simply make a copy of the background layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J with the background layer selected. And keep in mind there are so many other ways which I have discussed in this video. But patch tool is my favorite, so let's go ahead and use that. So select the patch tool from right here. You should see it in the healing group. Select that. And all you want to do is circle the blemish and take it to a place where there is none, which you want to replace it with. There you go, it's done. And then press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. Now keep in mind this is a slower method but does give you a much higher quality result. You also want to make sure source is selected right here. Normal is fine for the most part. And now let's go ahead and remove all of these blemishes. One of the coolest shortcuts I learned about the patch tool is that if you have several blemishes close by, you can select them all at once. So select this one for example and then hold the Shift key to add to it and let's select this one and this one and this one all right and maybe this one this is just to demonstrate and then drag them all at once to a nearby location and release it all of them are gone together press ctrl or command d now i've taken the time to do the whole thing i'm not going to bore you through the entire process so here is the before and here is the after massive massive difference have a look right here here's the before see all of these blemishes all around and here is the after. All of them gone. Simple, straightforward, it is just that it takes more time. But is that time worth the quality? Let us do it with AI and see if there's a quality difference. So here in this document, again, I'm going to make a copy of the background layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. And then go to Filter, Retouch for me. That is what I'm using as an AI plugin. And then Retouch for me Heal. This is something I recommend if you are editing a lot of photos and if you don't have a lot of time, if you're a professional or if you don't want to spend a lot of time editing, I'm going to leave the link in the description. If there are discount codes, I'm going to leave those as well. However, with this plugin, you have this sensitivity slider, which is in other words, detection of blemishes. If the sensitivity is low, it's going to detect less blemishes. If it's more, it's going to detect more and more blemishes. So let's keep it all the way up and then check make mask and hit apply. Well, a lot of it is gone, but is it as good as what we did manually? Let's take a look. So here's the before, here's the after. It was instant, so that was an advantage. However, it did leave out this one, but then again, it's an artistic call, right? It did leave out this one as well. Here's the before, here's the after. Most of it is still gone. Have a look right here, it didn't remove that. And also, let's take a look at the quality of removal. If you just zoom in, here's the before, here's the after. Texture here looks fine. Let's look at other areas, for example, here. Here's the before, here's the after. Yeah, the texture is pretty darn good. Now let's compare both of them side by side. So on your left is the AI retouch and on your right is the manual one. Of course, without any doubt, the manual one is just so much better, so much more cleaner, and it does give you the artistic control. But for the AI one, it does leave out certain blemishes like here, there, here, some places here and there you can take a moment to look at it as well. Also, it doesn't know how to remove the complex ones. For example, if you have a look right here, there is this weird thing, weird distraction that needed to be gone, which you can easily remove manually with the remove tool or the patch tool, which we have done right here. So as far as blemishes are concerned, definitely the manual way is a much higher quality way, but it's just that you have to give it more time. On the other hand, the plugin was just instantaneous. Of course, it's not perfect at all. However, you can just run it. It does most of the heavy lifting and here's what I do. I run it once and for the areas that it didn't get right, you can use something like the remove tool to easily fix those. That is all, for example, it didn't get this area right. No worries, just remove that. The next step is usually softening the skin or evening out the skin. For that, you can use dodging and burning, frequency separation, that is up to you. In this example, we're gonna use the best of the best dodging and burning. For that, here's a little tip that is not really required, but it makes your dodging and burning very simple. And that is create a stamp visible layer at the top by pressing Ctrl, Alt, Shift, and E. Whatever you're seeing on canvas right now, it merges everything at the top. And then just blur it by going to filter, blur, 
Gaussian blur. Let's have at about, I would say four pixels and hit OK. Now, why are we doing this? This is not frequency separation. This is just so that we don't get lost in the texture while we are doing dodging and burning. Otherwise, if we had not blurred it and then started dodging and burning, we would even start evening out all of those little pores inside of the texture just to avoid that and to give us a visual aid. We did this. No other reason. So let's turn on the blurred layer, name it blurred so that you remember to turn it off later. Create a simple layer at the top. Now dodging and burning can be done in a variety of ways. I simply create a layer, change its blend mode to soft light and just start painting with white and black. Let's name it Dodge and Burn. Let's take the brush, take a soft round brush. You want to make sure flow is at 1 or 2%. I'm going to set it to 1. For the areas that you want to brighten, paint those areas in white. Areas that you want to darken, paint those areas in black. So let us work on this area. You can even create check layers for luminosity. You can create a curves adjustment layer to give you more visual aids. But I'm going to keep it simple. Now let's take a look at the before and after. So here's the before. And here is the after just with a few strokes. It is so much better. And after you've done, for example, any area or the entire thing, you can of course turn off the blurred layer and check how it looks. And there it looks fantastic with all the texture still intact. Here's the before and here is the after. That is a huge difference. So I again took a little more time to do the entire thing. So here is the overall before and after. Insane, isn't it? And sometimes to make it more natural, we can always decrease the opacity. In this case, we can originally go at about maybe 60, 70%. Keep it at 100 just for comparison. Now let's get to AI and do the dodging and burning automatically for it again. Press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E to create a stamp visible layer at the top, merged layer at the top. Then go to filter, retouch for me, retouch for me, dodge, burn. There you go. Now here you can choose how much dodging and burning you want with a blend. So if it's zero, there is no dodging and burning. If it's all the way in, it is just too soft. So we're gonna keep it at about this level, possibly 140. You wanna create a soft light layer, check this and hit apply. Now it has already done the exact dodging and burning we just did, but since the blend mode is not soft light, you see this horrible ghost. So let's change it to soft light. Now let's compare. Here's the before and here is the after. Side by side, window, arrange, to a vertical. So on your left is the AI retouch and on your right is the manual retouch. So for the AI, here's the overall before and overall after. And for the manual one, here's the overall before and after. You can clearly see the quality is just miles apart. Now the advantage we get with manual retouching is that you get the artistic control to sculpt the skin the way you want. When you tell AI to do dodging and burning, it just does the general dodging and burning based on what it has learned, but not what you want it to do. However, I would say this in the plugin's defense or any plugin that you use. You can run it once. It does most of the heavy lifting. And then you can go in and create another layer for some more fine tuning. For example, you wanted to remove it all? Easy. Just change the blend mode to soft light, paint that area in white, and there you go. It is fixed. Here's the before, here's the after. See? gone. Also, let's say you don't want this line over there. You want to lighten that. Just paint over it and it's gone. So you can do most of the heavy lifting and then you can do the corrections according to your style. So basically it comes down to how much time you have and how much time you want to give it. Now let's talk about retouching the eyes and this is where I really think we can do so much better. So this is from an in-person Photoshop workshop that I recently did in Colorado Springs and my next one is coming up in North Carolina July 18th, 19th. So if you're nearby, I would love to see you there. So here as well, we have removed blemishes, mostly manually. Not so much was there. And then we manually did frequency separation. So here is the before and here is the after. Now, when it comes to the eyes, there are two aspects to it. Number one, removing the veins right here and then adding some shine and just enhancing that overall. So for removing the veins, I'm just going to create a brand new layer. Take the remove tool right here, which also kind of uses AI. And then you want to make sure sample all layers is checked and just paint over these veins. That's all. All right, so most of it is gone. So here's the before. You see all of those veins and here is the after. Now, if you want, if the eye whites have reds and if you want to make it even more whiter or remove that, you can simply create a hue saturation adjustment layer. With the help of the hand, just target that color. That is all. Change the hue and saturation all the way to the right hand side. You want to make sure everything is covered. So let's expand the range just like so. 
all of the eyes should be covered and then you can just simply zoom in on that area and increase the lightness you can also decrease the saturation there you go maybe increase the lightness even more probably at 52 saturation minus 12 select a mask press ctrl or command i now simply take the brush with white as the foreground color just paint over the white of the eyes again you want to make sure flow and opacity are high enough see all is getting fixed automatically similarly on the other eye all right take a look here's the before and here is the after it may be too much so you can go back to hue saturation go back to reds was it reds yes it was you can decrease the lightness and there you go it looks normal on top of that you can add some shine by creating a curves adjustment layer creating a point taking it up like so and take the mask press ctrl or command i with the help of the brush white as the foreground color just dab on the opposite direction of the light like so there you go similarly do the same right here and then erase the extras see you have added shine as well similarly do it right here as well do it right there as well and then erase the extras from the top as well now i've already taken the time to do it with separate curves for the left eye and the right eye as you can see as both needed different amounts of shine and then a little more kicker light here and there and here is the overall before and after definitely worth something now let's do the same thing with ai by going to filter retouch for me retouch for me something has to do with eye right here eye vessels let's see what it does it's taking time well that was fast again you have the control of how much you want to remove this is no removal and as we increase it see it detects those and removes them check make mask hit apply so that only those areas are replaced now you might notice something some anomaly with the ai here's the before here's the after it also does some weird stuff right here as well which we need to mask out but anyway here's the before here's the after it didn't really remove it all but it's all right it's all right for instantly doing it here's the before here's the after now let's do another one by pressing ctrl alt shift and e and then go to filter retouch for me retouch for me eye brilliance and it's all about how bright you want your eye to be that is all so i'm going to keep it at standard 100 right there in the middle you want to make mask and hit apply and that is all we get overall here's the before and here's the after and i have to say for automatic stuff it's pretty good so at the top we did it manually here's the before and here is the after that is just something else and at the bottom this is all ai so here's the before and here is the after minimal but it is what it is i think the manual one is way too much so we can decrease the opacity of the entire group so let's decrease it to about possibly i would say 72 to keep it more natural also when it comes to the teeth the story is kind of similar so here in this example we have done the entire retouching with just ai retouching plugins retouch for me here's the before and here is the after we have not done the teeth yet let us create a hue saturation adjustment layer with the help of the hand right here click on the teeth it detects that color increase the hue and the saturation all the way to the right and so far it is pretty good now you can narrow down the range a little more expand it or contract it depending upon the selection and i'm going to make it narrower and expand it stop just right there there you go it kind of works now from here take the hue and the saturation back to zero and just increase the lightness that is all you can also decrease the saturation too and it's fixed now you can select the mask press ctrl or command i since it's also affecting the skin take the brush and just roughly paint over it with white and it does a super duper fantastic job isn't it now you can also do it with ai but i think the mask of the ai is a bit harsher so let's turn it off create a new layer and press ctrl alt shift and e because the ai wouldn't work unless it's a layer with an image let's go to filter retouch for me white teeth right there and in this all you have to decide is how much whitening and brightening you want to do so you can whiten it even more oh that would be too much at about 26 is fine you can brighten it more or less i think the default values are pretty good i'm going to leave it at that and you can make a mask if you wish to and hit apply now this is good for a little bit brightening and a little bit whitening this is fantastic but the masking here is not as good 
So here's the before, here's the after. It also gets into the gum a little bit. However, with our results, it looked way more natural. So I guess in this case as well, we still have an edge. But when it comes to AI, we don't have to think of it as a competitor, as something that will take our jobs, but it can be used as a tool to help you make your processes much faster with the artistic controls that you want. If you're interested in Retouch For Me plugins, you can try them out absolutely for free. And I think right now they're running a sale. I don't know how long it's going to last. So I'm gonna leave a code that's gonna give you even higher discount than the sale. So I hope that helps. So when it comes to AI versus manual retouching, there are three things we need to keep in mind. Number one, time. How much time do you wanna give it? If you want quick results, definitely AI is the way to go. Number two, quality. At this stage, AI tools have become so much better than it used to be. Earlier, whenever you applied a skin softening plugin or a feature, or even there's a feature right now inside of Photoshop for skin softening, it used to look so plasticky and fake, but right now it has gotten so much better but I still believe it is not close to the quality of what you can do manually if you have the right skills. But I know that it's going to get better with time, which brings us to our third point, and that is artistic approach. This is something that AI just cannot do. It can carry out all the repetitive tasks, the mundane work, but when it comes to what you want out of your retouching, what areas you specifically want to lift, how you want to sculpt the skin according to your unique vision, only you know how to do that. What I do recommend in all of this, if you are a professional, is to go for a hybrid approach. For all the mundane work, let AI do its job, let AI do the general regular retouching, let it do most of the heavy lifting, and then for the areas that it didn't get right, or if you have an artistic approach, you can take it from there and this will save you tons of time. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and making videos like this possible. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.